All right, so now we're going to go ahead and check out the subtool menu. Over here you can see uh, most everything's grayed out right now because uh, we don't have multiple subtools in here. By the way, if you want to open up the subtool menu, you can just click right there. It's going to extend a little bit if you have a low resolution screen like me. It's a pretty big menu, so it's going to take up a lot of the screen space. But Again, you can see we just have one tool in there right now. It doesn't have extra subtools, so we're not going to be able to use a lot of functions of this at the moment. So what we're going to do, go up here to Lightbox, open up Lightbox, and click on the Demo Soldier. This is a default Z tool that comes with ZBrush. So double click on him, close Lightbox, draw him out, and go into Edit Mode. You see with this guy we have several subtools to uh, play around with. We got everything in here. We got his body, we got the shirt, we got the vest, backpack, shoulder pads, gloves, all kinds of stuff. So uh, basically this is all the different parts of your mesh that are separated. And if we wanted to go ahead and add a new one, we can go down here to a pin click a append it's gonna cut it's gonna have all the uh, tools that are in your scene right now all the tools that you have imported into your scene or loaded into your scene they're gonna show up through this append menu and you'll be able to click on one of them and it'll show up in your scene pretty simple okay and if you wanted to uh, duplicate that you can just click duplicate that's really easy it's a really straightforward function but uh, keep in mind though if you have really high subdivision levels on this guy or whatever and um, it's really high polygon density and you go ahead and duplicate it you're gonna be adding that many more polygons to your scene so it could be pretty taxing on your hardware if you're not careful so just keep that in mind uh, insert does the same thing as a pin so there's not much else to it there. Delete's pretty self-explanatory. Click delete, it's gone. Um, all low and all high right here. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically setting your subdivision levels for all your subtools to either all the low levels or all the high levels. Um, say for instance, if you have several of these tools at really high subdivision levels you have them at really high polygon density this is like this is four million polygons this is four million polygons or whatever and um, to keep your scene in check and make sure you don't tax your hardware too much you have some of them set at lower di division levels so you can come back to them later and, and manipulate them and sculpt them however you want but keeping that keeping them at lower levels is going to uh, be a lot easier on your hardware so you gotta be careful if you have your scene set up like that, you gotta be careful not to uh, click all high because you might end up crashing ZBrush if you don't have the memory to compensate for it. So just keep that in mind. Um, rename's pretty self-explanatory. It's just renaming your your subtool, the piece of your subtool. Pretty easy stuff. You just rename this demo soldier guy whatever okay moving on so now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to merge your tools which can be useful sometimes if you get too many tools in a scene or something and maybe you know that you can work better with uh, some of these combine which can happen a lot of times then uh, you can go ahead and combine them and how you do that let's say for instance we want to combine the vest and the shirt because they're pretty much the same we don't really need to do too much to them so basically you have a couple ways of doing this if you have all your subtools visible which by the way you can turn on and off subtools their visibility by clicking the eye next to the subtool. Just keep in mind too that the one you have selected, even if you turn the eye off, it's going to stay on because it's still selected. But if you turn the eye on, 
and then you turn it back off, it's going to deselect them and make all your other subtools invisible. And then the same thing here. And uh, the reason it's good to know this is uh, for the same reason as the uh, duplicating, because you might have all your subtools at a high resolution. And so when you click back on and all your subtools come back on, it might take a minute because it's a little harder on the hardware. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, so we're going to merge these two with the vest and the shirt. The quick way to do that is if your uh, subtool is above the one you want to merge, then just click merge down. Now this is an undoable operation and usually whenever you do it, it's going to come up with a dialog box that says this is an undoable operation. And then it will give you the option to go ahead and OK it or you can just click always OK and that will make sure that dialog box doesn't come up again which is why, why it's not coming up right now because that's what I clicked before. But anyway, so that's undoable operation. But you can see right here they're merged right now. So that's ready to go. That's pretty simple. Um, the other way to do this is to, um, let's say we're going to go ahead and merge the shoulder pad and the backpack. Make sure um, the other the other tools are invisible. Make sure only the ones that you want merged are, are visible. And then just go down here to merge visible. And you'll click that and that will merge the ones that are visible. But you'll notice what it did, it didn't merge them into the um, original subtool. It merged them into a new tool. And that's only with merge visible that it does that. So we have them as a new tool right now. And in order to get that back in, if we didn't want to keep these ones, we would go ahead and just delete them. And then we would just append back in the, uh, the new merge tool that we had. And it's there. Now it's a merge tool. Okay, merge similar kind of does the same thing, but it, it only merges uh, similar tools. We're not going to worry about that because you hardly ever use that. Um, weld right here, this weld button, is basically the same thing as merging in merging your vertices. Um, if you were to do that in a different program, if you were to merge your vertices so the tool becomes one tool and that way um, when you merge it together all the points are going to be merged together. So you'll be able to um, modify it without pulling apart the uh, two tools. You can do that if um, the vertices meet like uh, for instance if we were to do that here and try to merge the um, the boots and the knee pads here you see we got weld on right now and I merged it down but it didn't it didn't merge the vertices and the reason for that is because the vertices are not sitting on top of each other. The vertices have to be on top of each other for the uh, for them to merge together and create the one tool. But this is all still one tool, so we can still sculpt it as one tool. Okay, and UV is the same thing. Um, usually when you merge your tools together, they might not keep their UVs if they have UVs on them. So you can just click UV and uh, it'll enable the UVs to be um, maintained in the new tool that you merge together. Okay, So that's pretty much merging tools. It's pretty simple. By the way, um, also if you uh, want to reorder your tools in any way, like how I said if you wanted to merge this down into a, a different tool to create one tool. Well, you might be wondering, well, how do you merge? It? How do you merge it down? Make sure the tools above it. Well, these are the buttons right here that you use to get that done. These two in particular. This is how you merge your tool or move your tool rather up and down. In order, you just select the tool and then you click that. Go up and down the list. 
these tools right here, this is just selecting the tools in that order. But you can do that just as easily by clicking the tool that you want. So that's that. Okay, moving down. I'm going to move on to Remesh right now. Remesh is um, it's an older tool of ZBrush. It's recently been replaced, more or less, by um, Dynamesh because it's kind of the same thing, but Dynamesh does it a lot more faster and a lot more efficiently. Um, basically, what it does is it just retopologizes your tool into some new geometry and it fills all the holes and all that stuff. It does this all in one action, whereas with uh, Dynamesh, um, Dynamesh has it all separate actions, so you have more control over it. But uh, Remesh basically does that same thing. So if you have the newest version of ZBrush, you probably won't be using Remesh much since you have access to Dynamesh. But to give you a quick example, like these two right here. Go ahead and click uh, Remesh and uh, your resolution right here is going to determine how smooth in the, uh, the topology is, the new topology. So we want to make sure that's decent. It doesn't have to be super super high because that's going to be a lot more taxing on your hardware. But if you set it up to that and then you just click Remesh even though it says remesh all, it's not going to remesh all your tools. It's only going to remesh the ones that are visible. You see we kind of got a bloated wristband here. And uh, the glove is a little bit bloated too. But the reason for that is because the resolution wasn't set high enough. And uh, since this is an undoable operation, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, you can see it filled the hole there. Kind of. It filled the hole that was on the uh, inner ring of the wristband, but that's what Remesh basically does, just changes the topology. But since it's undoable, I'm not going to worry about going back and fixing that, setting the resolution higher, because it's pretty self-explanatory, the higher it is, the more um, accurate it is. But since you have access to um, Dynamesh more than likely, if you have the newer version of ZBrush, then you won't have to worry about learning too much about Remesh. So. Go ahead and turn all our tools back on. Back up over here. And we'll move on. Alright, projection, project all, and all this stuff right here. Um, basically what this is, is a way for you to shrink wrap, more or less, your mesh over another mesh. Now, uh, depending on how you do this, it's going to give you varied results, depending on which meshes you're trying to project against another mesh. But to give you the most um, simple example of it, what I'm going to do is duplicate the main body of this guy here. Okay, so we got two of them. And we're going to take the one we duplicated and lower down the subdivisions. Now let's say hypothetically you exported the higher res out and you retopologized it yourself or for whatever reason and um, you re-imported it back into ZBrush. And you re-import it back into ZBrush if you wanted to do more sculpting or something on it. Well, maybe you have UVs on it too that you, you want it to be non-destructive. You need to get your original subdivisions back and uh, maybe all the detail that you already sculpted in you just want to add on to. So basically, you're going to take the tool that you exported in the first place, the one that's already in the scene and sculpted, whatever, and then you'll have your lower poly tool that you just imported. Okay, and um, basically what you do here, you have to make sure, to get the most accurate results anyway, make sure that your lower poly is divided to the same divisions as your higher poly tool. We got three subdivision levels on each one. Okay, obviously it doesn't look the same. I mean it's real mushy and muddy and completely smoothed out, looks nothing like the original one, which sculpted detail has all this stuff in here. 
So we, we want to get it the same. So what we're going to do is turn on, make sure you have your lower poly one selected, and turn on your higher one's visibility. But make sure you don't have it selected, just turn on the visibility with the eye icon. Okay. You see the lower poly one is sitting inside the higher poly one right now. Well that's okay because we have the lower poly one selected. So we have, with that selected and you in your high poly one visible, go down here and hit project all. We will use the default settings because I think uh, that'll work. If it doesn't, we'll mess around with it. But hit project all. And you see here what it just did was it shrank it shrunk up the the um, low poly mesh around the high poly mesh. Pretty much giving us all our definition back. So we'll turn off the high poly mesh visibility. You can see obviously we have some pretty crappy artifacts around here. You probably could have avoided that by uh, setting the resolution or the distance a little higher. But um, just for the sake of brevity, we'll uh, we'll keep this since it's close enough. And uh, with the artifacts, you you're almost always going to have artifacts. Uh, you'll get lucky sometimes and not have many. So uh, if you have artifacts and stuff, you're basically just going to be going back in and smoothing them out manually until you get back to a closer amount of detail from the original one. But the the idea is that you're going to keep most of the detail that you originally sculpted in there. So it's it's still really useful. But we'll not worry too much about that. That explains the uh, the most of it. So Okay, we'll delete that guy. Alright. I'm moving on a little bit more. We'll finish up here. Um, the extract. The extract button down here is basically a way for you to extract new geometry from your existing geometry. And you do that by using masks. Now I'll explain masking a little more in detail and a lot more of what its purpose is and how it can be used later. Um, right now all you'll need to know is the control key. Hold down the control key you'll see your cursor turns to a yellow cursor and it says mask. It says mask, it says plus mask right there. Um, go ahead and click left click down while you have control held down and you'll stroke a mask onto it. Okay. Do that and you can hold down control and then hold alt to get rid of the uh, some of the mask there. The subtracting your mask there. But we'll leave this for now. Um, actually, let's go ahead and divide him up. We want to make sure we have some decent resolution. So anyway, let's just draw some something really stupid on him. I don't know. Really a half effort tank top, <laughs> just for just for the sake of example. So now we have that masked off. And you can use the default settings here also. They might be, they might work, they might not. We'll see. And uh, with that, just click extract. When you click extract, you see what it did was it extracted new geometry from the mask that we laid down. You can do this to create a lot of different things. Um, but the most obvious example is to create clothes from it. Because basically what that does is it creates a new piece of geometry and it adds it into your scene. You see down here we have a new piece. You see also the mask is still applied. To get rid of that, just hold control and click and drag off screen off the mesh and that'll get rid of the mask. The mask will also be applied to the original uh, source, which in this case is the body. So again, just click and drag off. Let's make sure we have the body selected. Click and drag off. And there you go. So now you have yourself a new piece of geometry to play around with, which is pretty cool. And you can create clothes and all kinds of other cool stuff from that. So it's very useful.
Okay. We'll go ahead and delete that. And just uh, another little cool tip here. Just remember that your undos and your redos are limited to each and every tool in your list. Um, it's not listed to the entirety of the list. So say for instance, I went and sculpted um, something here, and then I went and sculpted something on the vest. Okay, when you go to click undo, which is control Z, like most other applications, you hit control Z, you see it disappeared off the vest. You hit control Z again, thinking maybe that it will go back another action and get rid of the sculpting that you did on the body, but it's not. It's only undoing all the actions we've done so far on the vest. To undo on the body, you have to click back on that and click Control Z. And that's going to undo that. So, like I said, basically your undos and your redo history is limited to each and every subtool, which has a lot of advantages to it because uh, depending on how big the undo history is you might need to go back and undo something that you did a while ago and uh, it gives you a lot more control over each tool to do that instead of over the entire scene which could become really confusing if it were that way so so the last thing I want to show you before we end this lesson is the group split function. It's back here in the middle of everything. We skipped over it before. But uh, basically what this does is it allows you to separate your merged subtools so long as they're not merged by their uh, vertices because uh, that would make that one subtool. You wouldn't be able to do that. So if you have merged subtools like we have here with the boots and the knee pads. Okay, well obviously these aren't merged by their verts, so we don't have to worry about any problems with that. We can separate all these. Now if we turn polyframe on, clicking the poly F button down here, you can see they're kind of separated in the poly groups, the faces are, but uh, that's not going to be real accurate. So what we're going to do first is go back all the way down here. Make sure we close the geometry menu. Get it out of our way. All the way down here to polygroups. Go open the polygroups menu. And remember, I explained this before. What this does is it separates all your tools into their own group. Even though they're merged up here, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all uh, they're all together as one one piece of geometry. So uh, if you click auto groups, it's going to separate all of them. And you notice obviously by the color, like I said before, all the colors, each poly group is going to get its own color. So because these are all different colors, we know they're all separated now, in a sense. So they're all separated, but they're together. Recognized by ZBrush, they're together. Turn off the polyframe, now that we know they're all separated. And since we know they're separated within their group, we can just cl click uh, Group Split. And of course, it's going to give us the, uh, this is not an undoable operation. Okay, let's click Always OK, make sure that doesn't come up again. And now we have four tools from that. It separated all our geometry that wasn't merged. Um, the reason you'd want to do this is maybe by accident, if you merge something together, because merging is also an undoable operation. So if you merge something together by accident, then you can uh, go through that process and separate it again if you didn't mean to do that. So it's useful. Also, if maybe you bring in a new piece of geometry, you can bring it all in as one OBJ or one mesh and uh, separate all the geometry into all their subtools. It can be a little more organized that way when you're working between programs. 
but it's a uh, it's pretty neat it's a pretty neat little function to have in mind so that's how you do that and uh, I believe that's pretty much it for the subtool menu it's uh, really not as complicated as it seems there are a lot of really simple operations in there but uh, it's definitely something you want to know to uh, keep your scene organized Okay, so that's going to be it for this lesson, and uh, we'll move on to the next lesson.